thank you, madam, uh, for the uh, introduction. So, in fact, uh, 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 the biography that you already read uh, represent uh, me <laughs> more than what I am. But still then, uh, to express myself actually, I would like to take uh, roughly about two minutes to uh, introduce little more. In fact, to say about my background, how could I become a fellow and uh, how could I become a part of the professional body where the people whom I actually uh, followed even before enrollment uh, in my university. They were my dream person, but I am very happy that I can deliver a lecture, academy lecture in front of the audience uh, who were always my dream people, dream persons. So uh, actually this has already been summarized. You have seen uh, my uh, Google Scholar citations and Mabda mentioned that uh, it uh, crossed uh, 10,000. So it is a happy situation for me that in chemistry where there are not many people till now who uh, crossed this barrier. And uh, the research get index that is also uh, actually, uh, that is a, a reflection of what I learned from my teachers. And uh, okay, so I have actually now the number is 170 peer reviewed article. So besides the being a fellow of Bangladesh Academy of Science, I have been part of many professional organizations with some journals and as you heard also alumni associations. And actually the publication track, say total 170 peer reviewed articles. These are not only my effort, these have been the result of my very dedicated PhD student, MPhil students, master students and group of students. And I am fortunate to be advised by actually uh, uh, my supervisors and advisors who has actually uh, so built up me for today's uh, position. So you can see that uh, uh, my two respected supervisors, Professor Muhibur Rahman, I am very thankful to him that even at midnight he had joined to Oh, to listen to my lecture. Actually, all the content, these are known to him. But even then, uh, uh, his interest to join uh, uh, is really, really uh, a good feeling for me. So, in fact, I, as I said, I have uh, learned many things, even from the first year classes. He was my uh, class teacher and then supervisor for research and actually to build up my research career and to establish a material chemistry research laboratory you can see in the left Professor Yusuf Ali Mullah sir and Professor Muhibur Rahman they contributed a lot and uh, by the uh, funding of World Bank we could establish a material chemistry research laboratory Therefore, we have actually been successful to say uh, combine a set of people here. You can see Professor Omar Ahmed, Professor Mominul Islam, uh, Dr. Shamiran, Dr. Saik Ahmed. So we are in a team and we are trying to work hard to contribute for the innovation of science and technology and to popularize chemistry, to understand chemistry and to train students for chemistry. And we are, are in a material chemistry research laboratory. And uh, we are happy that we now have uh, many modern facilities uh, that are required for the synthesis of uh, materials to characterize them and to check their feasibility for uh, many different uh, modern applications. So these are the beginning. So you, in the animated show, you may see some of our research facilities. As I mentioned, that we are very happy that starting from the synthesis to characterization to, and to application, 
So we need many equipments, and you can see here that these equipments are fortunately present in our laboratory in the Department of Chemistry. Some which are not available, they, those can be say easily managed through collaboration. We collaborate with India, Nepal, Japan, and the USA. And we can say that we are trying to compete with the modern topic of research uh, around the globe. And we have actually been successful and we uh, in the material chemistry research laboratory now work on nanochemistry, supramolecular electrochemistry, polymer composite, water structure, ionic liquid, binary system, microemulsions, and you can see many more. So these are fundamental aspects, but our aim is to apply those for some practical applications. Those are really uh, needed for the development of our nation. And you can see, so here for microemulsion, so you can see if this can be used as nanoreactor. That will be in fact the theme of today's uh, lecture. And we use for uh, metal nanoparticle, coarse nanoparticle, nanocomposite, so this will be touched upon and we work on water structure. So, so hydrogen bond make water a really mysterious uh, solvent of the, uh, not only in chemistry for any research area. So, and we work on ionic liquid, which are room temperature liquid. And uh, this will also be touched upon soon. And uh, we, also uh, devoted ourselves on electrochemistry, electrodeposition, electrochemical synthesis, electrochemical oxygen reduction. All these are targeted for many uh, applications, uh, including uh, energy storage and energy uh, say creating, generating uh, materials like fuel cells, solar cells, uh, etc. Okay, so here is the was the say brief introduction or self introduction, whatever I can say. So now let me start the my main topic, which is ionic liquid based microemulsion, a nutritic medium to prepare nanomaterials with tunable properties. So there are I know today's audience is not only for chemistry. So there are people from many different. Uh, as a disciplines naturally. So I will try to make all the items say, understandable. And then I will uh, show the prospect uh, for the, say, since I call it new, a nutritic medium. So it has in fact many different prospects that are useful for many different areas, multidisciplinary areas. So in the last part, I will show those prospects. So before that, please allow me to introduce microemulsion, ionic liquid, and related concept. How are the, how do uh, microemulsions based on ionic liquid become a nutritic medium? And uh, how can uh, actually nanomaterials be prepared? And what do we really mean by tunable properties? So in fact, nanomaterials, so we know all know about this nano, extremely small. We know about all the dimension also. So at least one dimension should be in the uh, nano range from one to 100 nanometer. And uh, these are actually all common items. So I would rather try to go to the main story directly. So for preparation of nanoparticles. So there are two different techniques, bottom up and top down. And as a chemist, we are interested uh, mainly on bottom-up process because, so uh, as we know, nanomaterials are formed by, say, atom by atom or molecule by molecule uh, combination. So here, it is it should be easy to control particle size, morphology, degree of crystallization, crystallinity, chemical composition, etc. If we follow up bottom-up process. And uh, there are physicists that are interested about uh, carbon arc, laser ablation, vapor trapping. So these are some useful techniques, definitely, but these have their own limitations. 
and chemical methods. So there are many different, say hydrothermal method, uh, reverse micelli, microemulsion, electro deposition, ionic liquid. These are some uh, methods commonly used for bottom up methods. So uh, I will actually uh, make an amalgam, say, uh, by combining the concept of reverse micelli or microemulsion or even ionic liquid to make a a neuteric medium. So let me start with the microemulsion. We know oil and water, they are not miscible. If we even try, want to, uh, try to mix them, they will be phase separated as you can see in the top figure. But uh, milk, we know this is an emulsion. We have oil and the fat, so say these are say turbid, something like this. But we, if we can make an appropriate combination, then even uh, oil, water, this combination may also be made transparent. So these are thermodynamically stable, optically isotropic complex. These are microscopically, these are actually heterogeneous, but macroscopically, this look like uh, transparent. So here, say, you can see macroscopically, these are homogeneous uh, and uh, these are clear. Uh, and if we say, analyze this part, we can see that uh, microscopically, these have heterogeneity in the structure. And if we further uh, magnify, we can see that this has a special architecture. So the inner part is made of, uh, for this case, this is hydrophilic part outer side is uh, hydrophobic. So this can be made reverse also. This is the reverse structure of reverse micelli. So this is inverted micelli. So my, for micelli, depending on the polarity of the medium, the structure can be inverted. And uh, these polar and non-polar liquids are separated by surfactant species. And these are of nano dimension, nano domains. So these are nano domains stabilized by surfactant species and containing either polar or non-polar component inside. And say the, the preparation is rather simple. So what we do usually and uh, extensively use this method, say if we have uh, oil, co-surfactant and surfactant water and polar hydrophilic group. So if we dissolve in water, they aggregate, self-aggregate to form such structure, reverse micelli. The, uh, here you can see that uh, the inner part, the inner pore is hydrophobic. And these are called reverse micelli. As a whole, the, the system is called microemulsion. And these reverse micelli have the core of nano dimension. And if you carry out any reaction inside the core, so that will serve as a nano reactor. So that is the basic principle of, say, uh, the preparation of nanomaterials using reverse microemulsions or simply water in oil microemulsions for preparation of nanomaterials. And as the synthesis, you can see, so if we want to prepare a metal nanoparticle, what we need to do, we need to reduce it, say sodium borohydride. Metal salt and sodium borohydride will give metal a nanoparticle where sodium borohydride is a reducing agent. And if we say, if we have a microemulsion, we add metal salt here in another reagent bottle if we add sodium borohydride. And if we mix them together, so there will be coalescence, as you can see here. And then they will react upon reduction. You can see that uh, uh, the metal is uh, prepared. And since it is confined in a nano reactor, that means the dimension is of nano meter. That means any metal particle, nucleation and growth process will be restricted up to, to the dimension of nanometer. So if we can make a suitable control of the core, the hydrophilic core, it would be possible to prepare metal nanoparticle with controllable size and dimension. So, and say uh, for this, yes, we have prepared a series of metal nanoparticles. I will show some of them later. And uh, so this is a happy situation. We were very happy, but uh, can it cover everything? 
the need of all people of, from all disciplines? The answer is no, because say oil in water or water in oil might be melts and whatever it is, in this case, it is a hydrophobic core. And what I have shown earlier, this is, this is a hydrophilic core. So hydrophilic core, so in that case, this, you have seen that we have to use some volatile organic solvent. So volatile organic solvents used are oil phase are not regarded as green media. So if you pass through an organic chemistry laboratory, uh, so you should need not ask anybody that is it a physical chemistry or inorganic chemistry laboratory because of the smell, because solvents are evaporated and you can easily uh, say, recognize that this is an organic chemistry laboratory. The reason is the, uh, the high vapor pressure. So uh, high vapor pressure of solvents. So these are volatile. So these, are, uh, these come out and these are really not good for health. And in addition, water can be served as a polar phase and cannot dissolve a wide range of chemical. So for this water, water is a very versatile solvent. But for organic chemists, there are certain restrictions. Some organic compounds are not solubilized in water. So a better displacement of polar and non-polar phases in microemulsions is necessary. And can we use ionic liquids? And the possibility is that non-volatile ionic liquids. If ionic liquids are non-volatile, then the oil phase can be regarded as green media. This is one thing. And ionic liquid has, when served as a polar phase, it can dissolve a number of chemicals. So it is replacing water. So yeah, the solubilization capacity will drastically change. And so here comes ionic liquid. So ionic liquid. So this is another say uh, interesting thing. Ionic compound like sodium chloride, as you can see in the left side. So these are always solid. Sodium chloride, simple structure. It has melting point over 800 degrees centigrade. But how can ionic liquids be liquid? Ionic compounds, these also comprise only of ions, cations and anions, as you can see here. But these are liquid at room temperature, even far below room temperature. So actually, the magic behind this is the symmetry. So symmetric anion here, symmetric cation. If this is the case, so lattice energy factor becomes dominant. And for ionic liquid, you can see that uh, asymmetric cation. And often, asymmetric anion may also be used. And here, binding, loose packing, makes them, say, melting at low temperature. That is actually the uh, basic idea. And these ionic liquids, as uh, you might already understand, has negligible volatility, high thermal stability, chemical stability, high ionic conductivity. And you can see by changing the anion bromide, this is boron tetrafluoride, this is NTF2. The, the, here you can see the structure, same cation, but if you only change the uh, anion, you can see the melting point is changing. That means you can change the cation or anion, make so many different combinations and can have ionic liquids of your uh, expectation or desire. And uh, say this can also be of many different types like protic, aprotic, inorganic ionic liquids, solvate ionic liquids. This also gives uh, the scope of the ionic liquids for replication in many different areas. So protic ionic liquids uh, have a tip proton. So that means you can use it for energy application like fuel cell. So here no active proton. So this can be used for selectively a preparation of some organic compounds, drugs, or pharmaceuticals like this. And ionic liquids, in fact, uh, can be synthesized. Their thermal behaviors may be exploited. Their physical chemical properties may be tuned. And since they are ionic compounds, the ionicity may be, say, uh, optimized for many fold applications. And uh, we have, I have shown some uh, major applications here. So depending, yeah, say, for example, organic synthesis, we need non-volatility. We want to keep ourselves safe. Uh, safe. 
So low melting temperature is important. Wide liquidus temperature range is important. So for organic synthesis, we can uh, uh, we can pursue the chemistry that we have to ensure negligible vapor pressure and ion selectivity. In that way, we can uh, use ionic organic for this for as medium for organic synthesis and often as catalyst for organic synthesis. So now uh, let me move to the uh, microemulsion and some tunable parameters. So microemulsions, as I said, can be used for, as nanoreactors. So we target to control the core of the uh, reverse mycelium or uh, say microemulsion. So that can be done by controlling the water to surfactant ratio. I, I mentioned that uh, microemulsions have water, surfactant, and then oil phase. So by changing, say, if we increase the water, naturally hydrophilic pore will increase in this way. So is it really the case? So we checked by dynamic light scattering measurement. This is available in our laboratory. And we have seen, yes, this is the case. If we change, increase the water to surfactant ratio, the, the, the pore dimension increases. And uh, similarly, I will show quickly some results. So water to surfactant ratio, uh, say this is one thing, hydrodynamic radii of the water pool increases in this way. Say if we change the type of the co-surfactant based on chain length, so we can see this is the expectation. If chain length increases, it should decrease. And this is reflected in dynamic life scattering results also. So we can see a decrease. And say if we increase the branching of chain in alcohol like this, so you can see inside uh, for this, there is branching. So it should give conceptually smaller pore. And uh, this is also reflected in the dynamic life scattering results. And uh, we can change the type of surfactants like cationic surfactants, anionic surfactants, or non-ionic surfactants. And you can see wide variation in the core dimension. That means depending on our uh, application, we can prepare nanoparticles of desired size by changing the type of the surfactant as well. So by uh, actually applying this concept, we have prepared a series of nanoparticles and we have checked that nanoparticle size can be successfully controlled by using water in oil microemulsion. Then we moved to preparation of partial nanoparticles like iron, gold, gold, silver, or say semiconductor zinc oxide, silver. That means uh, the concept is there is one metal in the core. This is coated in nano level by another metal. So uh, we have prepared all these. I will show only the key results of one system here. And before that, let me show how microemulsions are used to prepare uh, this uh, using uh, water in oil microemulsion. The concept is again same. We have microemulsion in a double microemulsion scheme uh, separately. We add precursor solution. There is reduction. We have one, you can see inside one uh, nanoparticle is formed. And during the formation, nucleation process, we then, we already have one. Then we add the second precursor solution, second reducing agent, and then you see that uh, the coating uh, starts so on the core uh, material uh, the, where the nucleation already started. So the timing, uh, that uh, op optimization of timing is very crucial here, and uh, it can actually be optimized uh, uh, by trial and error. And uh, for this uh, uh, zinc oxide and gold partial nanoparticles, I will show some major observation. So zinc oxide, we know this is photocatalytic activity. Silver, so we have, we know that uh, this has limited properties as uh, photocatalyst, but it has antibacterial activity or some other properties. Uh, zinc oxide is not that uh, photostable. So if we combine these, we can make photostable compounds, nano hybrid nanomaterials, which shows the enhanced photocatalytic activity. So, so preparation of this is rather difficult by following standard procedure because of the crystalline mismatch. 
these two have entirely different crystal structure. But using microemulsion, using the same technique, here we have used Triton X100, non ionic microemulsion, and we have been successful to prepare this. And we have shown that the properties, say optical properties of such coarse nanoparticles are tunable. How? Say you can see the color and the corresponding change in the uh, say uh, absorption spectrum. So we can have say the outer layer is same for all these cases, but the core dimension is increasing, core material is increasing. That means we can increase, say here you can see this uh, silver composition is different and here zinc oxide say this is same. So we can make the variation. So this gives either blue shift or red shift in uh, surface plasmon resonance. And uh, this has again been applied to another material, say iron and gold. And you can see more clearly that surface plasmon resonance behavior uh, is related to the uh, core and the say, say shell, core and shell. So the dimension of this. So blue shift corresponds to the decrease in the size of iron core nanoparticles and increase in the size of iron core nanoparticles uh, causes red shift. And we can easily have a control over the size of nanoparticles and we can tune these properties and we can apply all the concepts, water to surfactant, molar ratio, nature of surfactant, chain length of uh, surfactants. We have verified all these parameters size controlling parameters of water in microemulsions, which can ultimately control the dimension of the nanoparticles. And now say I am showing you say for this, you can see the metal salt, silver nitrate uh, is uh, reduced here. And if we add say uh, here, uh, uh, this is a, in fact actually for the preparation of polyaniline, silver polyaniline nanocomposite. And in microemulsion, the polymerization occurred successfully using ammonium persulfate. And we have found a silver polyaniline nanocomposite. We have characterized this also. And interestingly, this in the nanocomposite, even polyaniline has the dimension of nanometer. So that means silver nanoparticles in silver uh, polyaniline nanogranules. And uh, when we checked, say here, you can see some images it clearly shows that uh, the poly, uh, silver polyaniline complex uh, composite could be prepared using water in oil microemulsion. So you can see that we have extended the concept from metal nanoparticles to semiconductor to say uh, here uh, polymer composite. Even we have uh, prepared another, other polymer uh, composite as well. So our first part is over now. So why ionic liquid? So microemulsions uh, have been showing many successes. So what can ionic liquid uh, actually do in such cases? Here you can see some ionic liquids. I will so show some simple examples here, chemical precipitation method for preparation of zinc oxide nanoparticles. You can see in the absence of ionic liquid, some dendritic structures, some flower-like structure you can see here. So zinc oxide have been prepared in this form. But if we add uh, ionic liquid, you can see the 3D star-like structure, which ultimately changes to uh, one-dimensional rod-like shape of zinc oxide nanoparticles. So these are our preliminary observations. And we have seen that zinc oxide has hydrogen bond, zinc oxide hydrogen bonds with ionic liquid and the morphology uh, controlling agent. It serves as a morphology controlling agent. And uh, to extend this concept further, we have also used hydrothermal method and uh, prepared zinc oxide nanoparticles using different composition of ionic liquids and many different ionic liquids. And you can see that we can simply play with ionic liquid. And we can have many different zinc oxide uh, st structures with many different size and shape. And we know that the, the size and shape of nanoparticles, both are important to uh, tune properties. 
So for microemulsion, we can have a control over size only. Here we may also achieve the control over uh, shape and as a whole morphology. And uh, transmission electron microscopic results also uh, show that yes, uh, so ionic liquids may be very important. And uh, properties are tunable. As you can see, by changing the composition of ionic liquid, we can control the band gap energy uh, of the zinc oxide nanoparticles prepared using uh, ionic liquids. And here also, uh, the mechanism shows that uh, the importance uh, should, uh, is here on the structure of ionic liquids and their interaction with zinc oxide nanoparticles, which ultimately controls the nucleation and the growth process. So uh, ionic liquid. So can this uh, only be medium or uh, only for this? We also discussed about electrodeposition. So I will show uh, only two or three slides. You can see three different uh, ionic liquids here and electrodeposition of cobalt uh, shows that ionic liquid, structure of ionic liquid here, anion is different, cation is different here. So this gives a wide variation in the potential window. And if we electrochemically deposit, you can see that the thin film prepared have entirely different uh, structure in aqueous solution, reverse micelle, and ionic liquid. So here, vermicelli shape, but here you can see these are be, uh, becoming spherical. So we can have a very good control using ionic liquid also. And the mechanism uh, also appears to be different, aqueous medium, reverse micellar medium and ionic liquid medium. So both of these are important. Here diffusion is controlled, but here the electrical double layer form that is being uh, influenced. So now uh, let us move to the final uh, part. Why ionic liquid based microemulsions? We have microemulsions, we have ionic liquid. Both are showing some promises. And hydrophilic and, and hydrophobic ionic liquids can be used to develop green microemulsions. We want to make microemulsions green by removing the non volatility feature. So, this will govern the size as well as shape of nanomaterials of our interest. And the electrochemical route is also feasible, which will generate nanomaterials with comparable level size and morphology. And uh, we have tried ionic liquid based microemulsions using all different TX100 is a non ionic, cationic, and anionic different surfactants. And we have shown that we can prepare by following the same style. That means, uh, say, if we have ionic liquid as a polar phase, so we can take other solvent, say, and we can uh, use many different ionic liquids, and we can prepare, combine these together ionic liquid, water, and Triton X100, and we can we can prepare clear uh, microemulsion, and uh, this is possible for uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, as well. You can see here hydrophobic and hydrophilic. That means green aspect can be easily introduced, and this also gave thermodynamically stable optically isotropic microemulsion. And say is property tunable, and uh, is it applicable to other? And you can see that, yes, we can change, for example, conductivity. Conductivity is dependent on composition, depending on the composition of the microemulsion. In different parts, you can see uh, wide dramatic variation of the property. And even the structure of the ionic liquids also uh, give many different uh, properties. So I have shown only conductivity. In fact, we have studied many other different properties also, those are tunable in the same <laughs> manner. And the droplet size of microemulsions also, as you can see, is dependent on the structure of ionic liquid. So now we have introduced both the features of microemulsions and ionic liquid in a new medium. In a, uh, say, uh, so we have a now a new medium, which say, combines the advantageous feature of both the systems. So actually, so far, we have uh, published uh, uh, our preliminary finding in ACS Journal, Journal of Physical Chemistry, RST Advances, ECS. Uh, you can see that all the major publishers. So we tried 
uh, to popularize our concept. And we you can see some more ACS publications or Royal Society of Chemistry publications. These have already been realized. Okay, so my uh, research findings are over here. So for the future research for our cases or for people of other disciplines. So we want to introduce a new theory medium. So based on ionic liquid, ionic liquid based microemulsion, as I said, combining both features, which can be applied to chemistry, physics, electrochemistry, material science, medicine, biology. In fact, where not, everywhere it is possible. For example, electrochemical application, so can you use conductive feature, non-volatility, non-combustibility. That means since these are ionic liquid, even being uh, say ionic, they, are, uh, they have this feature, but since uh, they are serving as the say, polar phase or say hydrophobic phase, they, they can become uh, non-volatile. So, and say we can use in pharmaceutical, nutritional, cosmetic, so actually some researchers are dedicated for using these separately, only microemulsion, ionic liquid separately, and they have, there have been successes. But I would introduce that you combine both features and use for these cases. You can use this as medium more successfully. And uh, you, you can use as supramolecular catalysis, drug delivery system. There has been some uh, preliminary results reported by uh, uh, reported globally. This can serve as heat transfer agent. And in our laboratory, we are also trying to apply the concept for preparation of many different nano materials and to nano uh, fabricate them to prepare smart uh, textiles based on multifunctional material. We can use for targeted drug delivery for preparation of thin film using ionic liquid by smart, uh, smart textile by nanofabrication. And say, actually, we have these novel systems based on ionic liquid. And uh, we can, as I said, uh, you use these as nanoreactor for preparation of many different uh, nanomaterials, those which are usable in many different disciplines. And we have ionic liquid based microemulsion. We want to claim that this is a neuteric medium. This can be used for smart materials, for development, and for, in fact, a sustainable development. And that is our goal from Material Chemistry Research Laboratory in the Department of Chemistry, University of Dhaka. So thank you all for the patient hearing for such a long time. I am sorry if I have taken too long time for the lecture. Thank you.